I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact for Michigan. We're here at the Detroit Institute of Arts. Famed Mexican artist Diego Rivera painted this mural around me. It's called Detroit Industry. And it's a tribute to the city's manufacturing roots. But Detroit didn't just build cars, it manufactured hope. It was where the American dream came to life. With a large block of blue collar workers, Michigan eventually became part of the reliable blue wall for Democrats. Until 2016, when Donald Trump won the state by the slimmest of margins, less than 1% of the vote. Michigan hadn't gone red since electing George H.W. Bush back in 1988. But in 2020, pundits of every stripe acknowledge black women voters will be the kingmakers or queen makers. They turned out more than any other group in 2016 and in 2012. African-American women have long been political players. Our special correspondent, Joey Chen, retraced the steps of some of America's greatest political forces to understand their influence here in Detroit as part of our Matter of Fact listening tour. The rich red Georgia clay once sprouted fields of cotton and made a comfortable life for families like Grace Allen's. But in the early 1950s, they, like so many others, moved north, wanting more. We wanted to do a, a better living. We wanted to do more than just chop cotton and pick cotton and hoe and, and do this and that and the other. And your children. Mm -hmm. You didn't want them to have that life. I wanted them to have a better life than I had. She brought her two boys north to a strange city, got a job working on the assembly line, and built two businesses of her own. I just wanted to do something to help somebody. A conversation in a barbershop is the most authentic thing that you can have in Detroit. At the Cut It Out Barbershop on Detroit's east side, this is what we do. Marlo no Stoudemire tells us the history no of his credit. city. As early as maybe 1915, a lot of black people were transitioning from the South, white South primarily, to come to Detroit for a better opportunity. Um, that's the Great Migration. That's the Great Migration. Some six million African Americans moved north in what's known as the Great Migration. Detroit's black population alone grew more than 34 percent in the first half of the 20th century, with women like Grace Allen leading the way. How does she fit into that picture? I think she represents a lot of stories that you haven't heard. Women who had to maybe do it all, from being the foundation of congregations, from volunteerism, to leading organizations, specifically at a grassroot neighborhood level. They were also the women who kept their families safe during Detroit's darkest hours, the long, hot summer of July, 1967. Law and order have broken down in Detroit, Michigan. When an explosion of long simmering frustrations and rage at an oppressive police force sparked rebellion on 12th Street. Those clashes echo even today in the cavernous vacant houses and the largely empty streets of Detroit's North End, where we could doubt, even for just a moment, any hope for Detroit's resurgence. That is, until we meet Jasmine Barnett. I am our ancestors' wildest dream. I am a youth activist. At 29 years old, with two degrees in hand, she moved into a fragile community just to support its girls. London said the correct way to ask for sugar is, may I please have some sugar, okay? Barnett launched Ladies in Training, a program to encourage social and professional skills and to expose these little girls to a world far beyond Claremont Avenue. A lot of the girls who live in this neighborhood, they live right here, which is 10 minutes away from downtown, and they have never been to downtown Detroit. She credits her activism to the woman who encouraged her dream, her grandma, Grace Allen. Did you realize that you were kind of creating a path for us to follow? I was hoping someone would follow me. She may not know that, or my parents may not even know that. That was a guiding light to me, making sure that I did the right thing. With a role model who served as a church leader, a union officer, and an elections official, stepping into community service was an obvious choice for Barnett, especially to empower Detroit's young black women at a critical moment in American politics. 
Beyond just voting, Jasmine and her peers are increasingly active in Detroit politics. Four women of color currently sit on the city council, including its president. And two of Detroit's current congressional delegation are women of color. It is our right and our duty to get up and vote on election day. Is it prime time for African-American women? I believe so. I think it's our time. I think it's our time because after so long, you can't take no for so long. You have to go out and get your yes. Show me the correct way. Getting their yes and getting ready to lead another generation of women in power. In Detroit, I'm Joey Chen for Matter of Fact.